Hey there everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I'm finally back as promised in the comments. It has taken me a long time, but I'm finally here and I have some videos ready for you. We're gonna go right ahead and jump in because I know most people don't like if you do long intros. And by the way, if you're interested in the description box below, you will find timestamps. If you wanna skip some parts, you will find the links to the products and maybe some affiliate links if you wanna help me out. So without any further ado, here are my top three sunscreens for this year. Number one, this is the Sundance Sensitive Sun Fluid SPF 50. Why is this my favorite sunscreen of this year? Well, it's because it has everything that an everyday sunscreen should have. Is it easy to find in a drugstore? Yes. Is it affordable? Yes. Is it effective? Yes, it's very effective. Does it have a nice texture? Absolutely. Is it water resistant? Yes. And it's also coral reef safe. Does it have any alcohol, fragrance or other bad ingredients? Absolutely not. This sunscreen is good for all skin types. So for oily skin, for dry skin, it's gonna work for everyone. It's also vegan if you're into that. Plus what made this sunscreen my top choice instead of my second sunscreen is the fact that it's very portable. As you can see, it is a 50 milliliter packaging, so you can easily carry it in your backpack or in your purse. So it really is a very, very good sunscreen and I highly recommend it. By the way, with this little sunscreen, there are also other products in the same kind of family of products and you can find products for the body. Uh, you can also find products for the body and for the face. Plus you also have this little SPF 50 lip balm from the same family of products. And it's very nice because it's translucent and it won't show up on your lips. So you have everything for your face, for the lips, for the body, you're covered. Now these products are only going to be found in DM drugstores, which is a drugstore from Central Europe. It's basically a German drugstore. So I don't think you will be able to pick these up, for example, on Amazon, but don't worry, I've got you covered. Let's move on to the next product. So my favorite sunscreen number, Two. This one has a long name. Are you ready? It's the Garnier Ambre Solaire Kids Sensitive Expert Plus anti sand Spray SPF 50+. This is my favorite so-called family sunscreen because this sunscreen can be used both on the face and on the body. Plus it can be used on adults and on children. So it's very easy to buy a couple of these cans and take it on holidays. It's very water resistant and sweat proof, so it's ideal for summer sports or water sports. And the spray form makes it very easy to apply on the go, especially with children. But its specialty is actually a blend of silicones and other polymers, which actually makes it anti-sand or sand proof. Now what that means is, you know how you go to the seaside and you go to the sand beach and actually sand particles tend to stick to your sunscreen because it's very sticky. Well, this special blend of silicones and other polymers makes it actually very easy to kind of scrape that sand off. It's very easy to brush off. So it doesn't stick to your skin if you when you get out of the water. I've never seen anything quite like it before and I'm actually very impressed by it and it works wonderfully. So I highly recommend this one, especially for holidays or especially if you have little children who are running around in the nature and it's very easy to reapply. So really a top pick. And the only difference between this newer version and this older version is that this older version has a fragrance and this one is fragrance free. Now this older version doesn't have any irritating or allergenic fragrances, but you know how it is. It's always best for your skin to pick fragrance free products because they are just more gentle on your skin. Now let's move on to my favorite sunscreen number three. And this is the Bioderma Photoderm Max SPF 50 plus milk. And I also have the sensitive extreme milk version, which is just a more powerful version of this, but this one actually comes out very white. So I actually don't recommend it that much. I prefer this one. Now, what is the sunscreen and who is it for? This is a chemical only sunscreen from the pharmacy and it's targeted at people who need very, very high protection from the sun. Honestly, if you're looking for the most powerful, most stable, most long lasting sunscreen, then I think this is your best bet. It contains the newest cutting edge, modern and most stable sunscreening agents like Tenosorb M and Tenosorb S. Plus it's also water resistant. So if you plan to do some water sports or some hiking in the hot sun, it's absolutely suitable for that. Really, really great protection. There are just a little negatives about this sunscreen that I would like to warn you about. The first one being that it's a little bit whitish on your skin. So if you're wearing it, you know, not under makeup, but on its own, it may come across a little bit whitish or a little bit ashy, especially if you have darker skin tones. And the second thing is that it can be a little bit irritating to your skin because it does have that high percentage of chemical sunscreening agents, 
which can be a little bit irritating. So keep that in mind. If you have very sensitive skin, maybe go towards physical sunscreens, mineral sunscreens like zinc oxide and uh, titanium dioxide and skip this one. But if you need long, stable protection, then this one is just awesome and I highly recommend this. Okay, so these were my top three picks for this year of 2020. And now we are going to take a look at some sunscreen basics. If you've never shopped for sunscreens, I'm going to explain how you shop for them, how you choose sunscreens, why you should wear them and so on. And then I'm going to mention my other sunscreens and the ones that I didn't like that much. And if you want to skip this next part, just remember in the description box below, you will find timestamps. So it's very easy to do so. Okay, time for some sunscreen basics. Uh, if you've never heard about why so many people choose to wear sunscreens every day, well, in short, they actually help prevent sunburn. That's the main reason why you wear sunscreen. And then uh, it also helps prevent skin aging, inflammation, skin damage and so on, which ultimately lead to some types of dangerous skin cancers. And you are trying to prevent that with sunscreen. If you're buying and using skincare to improve your skin and not wearing sunscreen, then you're basically not doing anything. You must apply and wear sunscreen religiously in order to see improvements in your skin and also prevent skin aging. Now, the second thing I would like you to know is the three types of sunscreens we have. Number one is physical sunscreen, number two is chemical sunscreen, and number three is hybrid sunscreen. First, we have physical or so-called mineral sunscreens. They are just like very tiny sand particles, which you apply on your skin, and then they sit there and they act like small mirrors. They actually catch and reflect the UV light so it doesn't come through to your skin and it doesn't burn it. Now, because they just sit on top of your skin and don't get absorbed into your skin, they are very suitable for sensitive skin. But sadly, this is also the reason why they usually have a very thick texture and a very wide cast. They also come in two forms, in regular size and in nanoparticles, which some people don't like. So remember, physical sunscreens or mineral sunscreens are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, and they are best for sensitive skin, but are very difficult to formulate. Next, we have the second type, which are the chemical sunscreens, and these do get absorbed into the top layers of your skin. There they catch, scatter, and also absorb the UV rays and convert them to heat, which is infrared light. Now, there are tons of chemical sunscreen agents and their properties vary a lot. That is the reason why manufacturers use them together in combinations to achieve the desired efficacy and broad spectrum coverage. Now, you also may have heard that in the US, due to some FDA regulations, there aren't as many chemical sunscreens available as in some other parts of the world. And that's a real bummer because these older sunscreens, which are available in the US, often can cause skin sensitivities or are a danger to marine life. So before you buy a chemical sunscreen in the US, I would highly recommend you to try a tester before buying. And now lastly, the third type of sunscreens are hybrid sunscreens, which are actually just a combination of physical sunscreen combined with chemical sunscreens, and they do so because they want to achieve the best of both worlds. The next thing you should be looking for when buying a sunscreen is that it has to say that it has UVA and UVB or broad spectrum protection. Now, the vast majority of modern sunscreens are broad spectrum, but it never hurts to double check. And when it comes to the SPF factor and the UVA or PA plus ratings, I always recommend SPF 50 or SPF 50 plus. And this is just because people don't apply enough sunscreen to get these high SPF values. The average person actually applies around one quarter of the recommended amount of sunscreen. So instead of getting SPF 50 or 50 plus, you actually get an SPF of 15 or 20, which is a lot lower than what you wanted. So my recommendation is choose the highest SPF value and UVA protection values, plus apply as much as possible in the morning. And then throughout the day, if you can reapply as much as you need, especially after drinking, eating, wiping your mouth, wiping your nose, sneezing, sweating, swimming. Speaking of swimming, if you need a sunscreen for water sports, for the holidays at the seaside or something like that, I recommend that you go for a sunscreen which says water resistant or even better would be very water resistant. Also keep in mind that some sunscreens are going to be coral reef safe, which is going to be mandatory in some parts of the world like the Hawaii. And lastly, look for other beneficial ingredients like antioxidants, 
anti-inflammation ingredients, skin soothing ingredients, an alcohol-free formulation and a fragrance-free formulation, and a nice texture for easy application and easy reapplication. You can also go for natural, organic, vegan, but keep in mind that some of these natural products don't protect you as well as some other chemical ingredients. So you have to look for a high SPF value and broad spectrum coverage. And you need to reapply during the day. Not applying enough sunscreen or not reapplying it enough frequently are the two main reasons why people get burnt and then they say the sunscreen don't work. Well, actually they do work, but you are not using them correctly. Don't make this rookie mistake yourself. Okay, so now let's take a look at the sunscreens that I did like actually very much, but they just didn't make it in my top three recommendations. These are just going to be some quick reviews, but if you want more information, you can find it in the description box below. The first product is the Sun Cover Sun Care SPF 30. It looks like this, and it was actually created by Dr. Jetska Ulta. They sent me this sunscreen a couple of years ago, alongside with their book about skincare and skin. And I have to tell you that I was very impressed by it, because this is not just a sunscreen, it's also a little bit of sun care mixed in with the sunscreen. I like it because it's a very nice everyday sunscreen. It has a very nice fluid texture, it's not too greasy, it's not too sticky, it has good UVA and UVB filters, and it also has a nice amount of niacinamide inside, which for those of you who don't know niacinamide, it is actually a B vitamin, which helps to protect your skin and it actually regulates your skin. So really a very good product, very nice packaging, very nice application, very nice wear, but the price is nice. The only thing why it didn't come to my top spot is because it is only limited to some portions of Europe, so it's not so easy to come by as some other sunscreens, but nevertheless, if you can pick this up, I think it is a very good choice. The next product I like very much is the La Roche-Posay and Helios Dermopediatrics Wet Skin Gel Lotion SPF 50 Plus with wet skin technology. So you can see it's an absolutely humongous bottle of 250 milliliters. And I think this sunscreen, as the name implies, is best suited for water sports or for children who go to holidays or to the seaside. It's basically a chemical-only sunscreen with liposomal technology, which means that the sunscreen agents are packed into small bubbles of lecithin, which then goes a little bit deeper into your skin, but not too deep, where it remains stable and steady, so the water from the sea or from the pool cannot wash it away so easily. That way it provides longer lasting protection in the water, plus it's also perfume free and it doesn't have a lot of alcohol. The only thing I don't like about this sunscreen is that it's a little bit greasy, so it's not the most pretty to apply to your face. It's also a little bit more difficult to wash off, but you do get a piece of mine when you're going into the water and that alone in my opinion makes it a little bit more justifiable and the price is also not too high especially for the amount you're getting in this packaging by the way you can also find this in your local pharmacy and then we have one other sunscreen from the pharmacy and it is the Uriage berry sun lotion spf 50 plus and it is for the children as you can see this is the packaging and it says here that it is fragrance free water resistant and hypoallergenic now this is a little bit of an older version that i have here but you can find the updated versions with the newest sunscreening agents like Tinosorb MNS that I mentioned earlier, and those are going to be even a little bit better than this one. What I like the most about this one is that it is very high protection and it is very nice to apply and it is very soothing on the skin. So it's essentially a very nice moisturizer with built-in high SPF values and it's easy to apply. But what I don't like about it that much is that it is a little bit shiny shinier than I would prefer. My friends do tell me that it is very good under makeup, so I guess you should ask for a tester in the pharmacy and you will see for yourself. Also, a small interesting thing about this is that if you're vegan, this isn't going to be suitable for you because it does contain carmine and carmine, if you don't know, is a red dye made from uh, squashed bugs. But Uriage do offer other formulations without carmine, uh, which are vegan, and you can choose those. And now the last sunscreen in this kind of medical slash pharmaceutical range of sunscreens is the Daylong Extreme SPF 50 Plus Liposomal Sunscreening Lotion. This is also quite a big packaging of 200 milliliters, so it's meant for the body and for the face. This sunscreen is absolutely one of the most powerful sunscreens on this planet. Just 
just because it contains a high amount of those newest, most stable, most powerful sunscreening agents like Tinosorb M and S. And like the La Roche-Posay one, this one is also liposomally encapsulated, meaning those little lecithin bubbles which go into your skin. So it's ideal for water sports or sweating in the sun. But I don't like this one as much as the La Roche-Posay one, just because it does contain a higher amount of alcohol and it's more difficult to apply, it's more sticky, it's whitish. So if you need a uh, high performing sunscreen, I highly recommend this one, but maybe try the La Roche-Posay one first and then go to this one if you don't like that one. But still, I like it very much. The next product is a little bit unusual, but very practical because it is an SPF sunscreen stick, as you can see here. Wait, let me show the whole packaging. It is the Lavazone Sun Stick for children SPF 50 plus and I bought this sunscreen because it's a little bit awkward to apply sunscreen to your hands which also do age and which also can get skin cancer so you can just keep this nearby and apply it to your hands like this it's much easier than going with the lotion and then smearing it it's a little bit awkward doing it this way but like this it's easy to reapply it's much more compact so yeah it's easy to use it has high SPF it's water resistant and it also smells like fruit I like that and the last sunscreen that I like very much this year is actually a very special sunscreen and it is the Refresh from Ringana. This is the front page, I guess. And then here you actually have the label. This was actually a gift from my friend Sara and she went to Austria to buy me this product and to review it. And I have to tell you that I was pretty impressed by it. This is actually the only mineral sunscreen from Europe that I actually enjoyed. To be honest, I'm not very impressed by it from the sunscreening point because it's just SPF 20 and you would have to apply a lot to get some kind of good sunscreen protection. But I was very impressed by the overall formula because it does contain all of those soothing and antioxidant ingredients that we mentioned before. Plus it offers you a little bit of SPF protection throughout the day so maybe use this if you're working inside or during the winter because this is actually quite nourishing and I won't say greasy but it is nourishing it is a cream I wouldn't recommend this for oilier skin types or maybe for acne prone skin types it does shine quite a lot after you apply it and it does persist but if you don't mind that and if you enjoy natural products then I think you should try this. Okay, these were all the sunscreens that I enjoyed this year. And now let's just move on to the sunscreens that I didn't enjoy so much. Okay, I'm not going to waste a lot of time on these products because honestly, you shouldn't buy them. In my opinion, it's just a waste of money. But I do want to take some time and explain to you why you should never be brand loyal because it is not safe to assume that all products from this one specific brand are going to work for your specific skin type. What I'm trying to say is try many products from many different brands and never stick to one brand only. Okay, so the first product that I didn't like at all this year are these by Sundance. These three are actually so full of fragrance and other irritating ingredients that I absolutely don't recommend them. And then the last product by Sundance is this sunscreen roller for kids. And here it says limited edition and thank god it's limited edition because it's absolutely horrible. I mean the formulation is not horrible, it's actually a very good formulation, a standard sunscreen formulation without perfume, but what I don't like about it is that it comes in this deodorant roller styled form and when I was picking this up I thought to myself oh it would be so nice if I could just roll it on the backs of my hands like the other sunscreen from Lavozone but it just ended up being a huge mess for me because I mean it's just very sticky and not very hygienic so I have to pass, I regret buying this. Okay, the second product that I didn't like this year is by Garnier and it is the Ombre Solaire Sensitive Expert Plus SPF 50 Plus Defense Spray for your face. Okay, again, a very long name. This is the product. And as you can see, it is also in spray form, just like the sunscreen that I like very much. But unfortunately, it is not as elegant as the first one. And also it contains a lot of perfume, so it can make your eyes water. And I don't recommend this one. What I like about it is the form size of 50 milliliters, no, 75 milliliters, but it's not really that usable and the texture is also off. So to just go ahead and spray it on your face, like it says here, I don't think so. I think it's very greasy, I think it doesn't absorb well and it doesn't wear well. Plus it stinks, so a pass for me. And then we have Bioderma. And from this brand I have these three products that I absolutely hate. So you can take a look at them and never buy them. Okay, so these two are targeted for children. And what this is, is actually a 
pigmented, a blue pigmented version of the first sunscreen, the first Bioderma sunscreen that I reviewed. It's very thick, it's very greasy, it really is bluish, so I don't recommend you use this one. The, you can see the blue tint and the texture is horrible. So I would pass on this one and I would actually buy the sensitive formula or the regular milk formula. And then the second formula is actually quite a novelty for me because this one is a mousse sunscreen and I can show you how it looks like. First you take it and you shake it and then you just squeeze it out like whipped cream. Do you see this? And now watch this. I mean, as I try to rub it in, and then do you see this? Do you see the difference in my arms? This one is so wide that actually it's unusable. It can be only used on children, you know, to make it a little bit more fun for them to apply sunscreen and for that it's great. But for adults, I say this is very unusable. Plus it doesn't fully absorb. So if you are trying to wear this on your face or on your body to the beach, or I don't know, as an everyday sunscreen for the body, I think you have better options like the Garnier or other Bioderma products. And now the last product from Bioderma that I didn't like as much is this Bioderma Mineral Sunscreen. It's actually called Photoderm Mineral SPF 50 Plus. I bought this because, again, I was looking for a gentle formula sunscreen for sensitive skin and of course mineral sunscreens are best for sensitive skin. But this sunscreen is actually so full of titanium dioxide and zinc oxide that it's actually pure white and it's very greasy because it doesn't contain any water, it only contains oil. So it's actually very difficult to apply and it's very difficult to absorb into your skin and it never really settles. Now look at this tiny amount and how difficult it is to incorporate it into your skin. I mean, you can just keep on rubbing and rubbing and trying to get it into your skin, but it will never fully absorb and it will never settle and it will always be greasy and shiny and whitish, if you can see the difference. Quite literally, night and day. Now, if you have very sensitive skin and if you don't tolerate fragrance, alcohol, preservatives or chemical sunscreening agents, then this is going to be perfect for you, especially if you have very dry skin. But otherwise, I think there are more elegant and more usable formulations and you should just stick to hybrid or chemical sunscreens, in my opinion, or buy some other better mineral sunscreens. Now, speaking of other mineral sunscreens, this is our last sunscreen in this series and it's also a mineral sunscreen and it's the Terra Naturi from the drugstore. It looks like this. And just like this one from Bioderma, this is also quite unusable just because it's also very white and very difficult to apply. But this one isn't greasy. It's actually quite stiff, like a wax. You can't even shake it up. Do you hear? Nothing is moving. And if I squeeze it out on my hand, look. I, can't b I can barely squeeze it out. It's like paste. Oh my gosh. It does have a very powdery and flowery smell to it. And actually it looks a lot better than the Bioderma. So this is Terra Naturi and this is Bioderma. But still compared to other sunscreens, especially chemical sunscreens, I think this is just unusable. Only buy this one if you think that you need a natural and an organic sunscreen. And I think this is also vegan. Yeah, it says it's vegan. So if you're into veganism and nature products and organic products, then this one is suitable for you. Just keep in mind that it's very hard to apply. It has a white cast, it's thick, and you probably aren't going to be able to wear any makeup on top of this. But still, if you value organic stuff, then okay. And with that, we are at the end of this video. Thank you so much for taking your time and watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new. Don't forget about the description box. You will find all the information there and you can also like this video. You can also comment on this video. Actually, you can tell me which sunscreen you use and which sunscreen you would like me to try out next. And you can also subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my other upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you will have a nice summer. Bye bye.